How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls? I am Julia Sumner Miller once again, and physics is my business. And we come once more to the subject of heat and temperature. And this program, we shall devote to this subject explicitly. How can we produce heat energy? How can we produce heat energy? Now, there are numerous ways which we can resort to to produce heat energy. And first, first, supposing I have some water here, and this is something you must not ever do. Notice the firmness with which I make that sentence. Water. Supposing now I had here some acid of some sort, sulfuric, hydrochloric, some kind of acid added to water. Very dangerous business. The action, we say, is exothermic, releasing heat energy. You must never do it. But what am I suggesting? Chemical action is one way to produce heat energy. Chemical action. Another. Indeed, I'll approach it another way. There are various kinds of energy. Mechanical energy. Uh, acoustic energy. Electric energy, magnetic energy, electrostatic energy, nuclear energy, electromagnetic energy. All of these kinds of energies can produce heat energy. And so we say that thermal energy or heat energy is a degenerate form because all the other forms can go that way to that one. Illustration. Illustration. Here is a cup of tea which is cold. Cold. I want to make that cup of tea proper and adequate to drink. I propose to heat it. How could I heat it? I could heat it by stirring it in this way. Stirring it, stirring it, stirring it. Take me a long time, but I am converting mechanical energy to thermal. <clears throat> or consider the following. Here is a beautiful one. Acoustic energy. And I have made this calculation. You know that it takes work for me to talk. Indeed, I ate food which has been metabolized, which makes available energy so that I can talk. So, the compressional waves that are emerging here involve an output of energy. I say that if I talked long enough onto that cup of tea, I would heat it up. Indeed, I've made the calculation. Ordinary talk produces about 100 ergs per second. And an erg is about one ten millionth of a watt. So if I wanted to light this electric lamp or heat that cup of tea, you see it would take several hundred million people talking for a long time, but it could be done. I'm suggesting the conversion of acoustic energy to thermal. Or consider another. <clears throat> consider another. Here is a slab of lead in which I have inserted a thermocouple. Now, you know what a thermocouple is? Two wires of different stuff. I could connect this block of lead there's the block of lead with two wires in it. I could connect this to a galvanometer. And I could suck, beat, hit that slab of lead in this fashion. And we would see an amazing thing. This galvanometer would show an electric current, which means that it, the junction here has suffered some rise in temperature. Or a better one. Here is a nail. I have done mechanical work on the nail. Now I'm going to pull it out. Oh, oh, there it is. I have plenty of evidence that that nail is hot. Mechanical work, or a better one. I like to do this one because it has much history of an enchanting sort. An electric drill. Hot. The wood chips are warm. 
and I am therefore reminded that mechanical work arising from electrical energy converts to heat. And I like to do this experiment because it brings to our attention this man, Count Rumford, William Thompson, a Yankee who turned British, who became German, who married Lavoisier's widow, who for the Bavarian government was engaged in drilling cannon and discovered that the chips got hot and he threw the first light upon that very difficult subject of heat, which was originally called caloric. See, we get the word calorie. Or consider the following. In this tube, I have some lead shot, little BBs. Good. Supposing I weighed the lead shot and I took the measure of this length, clearly I do certain mechanical work in raising the shot to the top and then gravitational forces pull it down. The mechanical work I do is converted to heat. I could do this 10,000 times, taking the original temperature, finding the final temperature, getting the difference in temperature, and it is an elementary classroom exercise. If you know the mass of the stuff, the change in temperature of the stuff, the amount of mechanical work that was done on it, W-O-R-K, you could find and, uh, uh, well, we would find what? The mechanical equivalent of heat. How much mechanical work does it require to produce heat? Answer, answer. Look at here. This is fantastic. 778 foot-pounds of work to produce one British thermal unit. What does that mean? It means that I have to do 778 foot-pounds of mechanical work to produce enough heat energy to raise one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. So I suggest, indeed, it occurs to me every time I take a bath, that enormous mechanical work has been required to heat that much water to that high a temperature for me to bathe. And it always brings me to think of that beloved Count Rumford, who married, as I say, Lavoisier's widow.